Quantum Gravity Constraints from EFT Streams. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. So first of all, let me thank the organizers for the invitation. I'm really glad to be here. And OK, so in um, this talk, uh, I will discuss some uh, recent work done in collaboration uh, with Nicolo Risso, Timo Weigand, and also some uh, uh, I mean, previous work done in collaboration with, uh, with Stefano, Fernando, and Irene. And so in particular, I will discuss what strings in four dimensions can tell us about the consistency of effective field theory uh, with quantum gravity. And the presence of strings in a four dimensional effective field theory is quite familiar in uh, string theory models uh, in which the strings typically uh, uplift uh, to some higher dimensional brain wrapping some uh, internal cycle. But more generically, in the more general quantum gravity theory, the existence is implied by the completeness hypothesis whenever there appear some. Oops. Can you, can you see the point? I cannot. Sorry, I cannot see the point. So uh, there appear some two form potentials in the effective field theory. So, more specifically, I will focus on uh, uh, strings which are BPS in effective field theory, which preserves minimal supersymmetry at the UV cutoff scale. And this supersymmetry can be broken at lower energy scales. And furthermore, I will focus on what's called fundamental strings, which have been also discussed by Matt today, uh, which are basically strings which cannot be resolved into some smooth solitonic object within a four dimensional effective field theory. So uh, uh, it's clear that such strings uh, appear as natural probes or the UV completion of the four dimensional effective field theory. Now, if you introduce the, the, the strings as electrically charged objects, but uh, you can get a magnetically dual description by dualizing these two form potentials into corresponding axions. And then the strings can be regarded as axionic in the sense that around them, the axions undergo some integral uh, and vanishing shift, uh, which basically, which is basically set by the charges of the, of the string. Now, in doing this dualization, we, uh, I mean, you can perform it uh, at the Lagrangian level in manifest supersymmetric way, and you automatically get a theory which is invariant under uh, axial shift symmetries, okay? On the other hand, in quantum gravity theories, we know that uh, there shouldn't be global symmetries, as we heard several times in this conference, uh, and then uh, such axionic shift symmetry should be uh, interpreted as preserved at some perturbative level and broken by some non perturbative corrections. So one is naturally led to focus on some asymptotic region or the field space of your effective field theory around some infinite distance points uh, associated with some perturbative regime. And uh, uh, with respect to which the axion is sheet symmetry are preserved at the perturbative level by then broken by exponentially suppressed non-perturbative corrections, okay? And, uh, uh, and then it's clear that, uh, so these kinds of fundamental strings which can be added to effective field theory uh, are natural probes of these uh, asymptotic field space regions and of the corresponding perturbative physics. Now, at this point, one has to take into account an important subject, namely the fact that uh, Strings in four dimensions have codimension two, and that means that they have a large back reaction. One cannot uh, apply a probe approximation. And uh, so they cannot be considered as probes of a given vacuum, since uh, they will generically destroy the asymptotic structure of the vacuum. They, they will force, uh, they can force the surrounding scalars to flow to some possibly strongly coupled region. And generically, they have incredible effects which are out of control. On the other hand, as long as we are interested in the effective field theory, the structure of the effective field theory defined at the UV cutoff scale, then there is no problem in interpreting these strings as possible localized contribution to such effective field theory. As long as the, uh, the, the, the bulk theory is in the weakly coupled region, 
in a small enough neighborhood of the street, say of the size uh, set by the UV cutoff scale of the effective field theory. So from this EFT viewpoint, the back reaction of the string can be interpreted as an energy flow of the string couplings. And one is naturally led to focus on those uh, uh, strings, which uh, automatically, which force the, the surrounding scalars to flow deep inside this asymptotic region. Okay, so this as, as you approach the string, I mean, so precisely this kind of strings will have, uh, will admit uh, very naturally a weakly coupled control description within the effective field theory. And uh, for this reason, we dub them EFT strings. Okay, and the following, I will focus on these EFT strings. Now, this definition of uh, EFT strings is quite qualitative, but uh, we can make it more precise by exploiting the supersymmetric structure of uh, the, the effective field theory which in particular implies that the axion should be paired with corresponding axioms. And then quite generically, one can associate this asymptotic region with a corresponding saxionic domain, which has the shape of a cone determined by the possible non-perturbative corrections. And once you have identified the appropriate saxionic cone corresponding to a given asymptotic region, then the spectrum of the possible or the charge of the possible EFT strings is just determined by discretizing this cone. Okay, here I'm fixing the discretization. The discretization is non ambiguous because I fixed the normalization of the axon to be equal to the periodicity of the axon to be equal to one. And uh, so you see that uh, uh, there is this connection, in particular, vice versa, if you have the spectrum of EFT string charges, then the saxonic cone. Can be regarded as generated by these uh, EFT charges. And then you see that there is a, a strong connection between these EFT strings and these asymptotic field space regions. Indeed, we explored this correct this uh, connection in particular in relation with the weak gravity conjecture and the swamp and distance conjecture in our paper. There are also some related ideas uh, also obtained from the complementary viewpoints uh, presented in these papers. But in this talk, I would like to instead to, to focus on what the quantum consistency of these strings, uh, these EFT strings, can tell us about uh, the, the bulk sector. So the, the philosophy that uh, I will adopt uh, is uh, morally the same adopted uh, in, in this paper, starting with the paper of uh, Kim, Xu, and Bafa, uh, in which strings uh, in uh, higher dimensions were considered. And now, crucially, in uh, these higher dimensions, I mean, there is a crucial difference with respect to the strings in four dimensions, since in this case, uh, the strings can really be considered probes of uh, the vacuum structure of the theories. Uh, they do not have such a bad uh, infrared behavior. And in particular, we can, uh, they, ca they assume, I mean, one can assume the existence of infrared fixed point or the worksheet theory supported on the string. And then by exploiting the corresponding superconformal field theory structure, they could obtain some nice constraint on the bulk effective field theory. Okay. In our case, we cannot do the same as I will try to explain. However, we propose that uh, as the bulk sector around the string, precisely for this EFT string, is weakly coupled, also the worksheet sector supported by the strings can be described within a, a, a weekly cap of the gene. And then we can make uh, trustable calculations for the, for the corresponding physics, uh, particularly quantum physics and the, 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 the possible, uh, the cancellation of the possible anomalies. So by assuming the completeness of the EFT string spectrum, which we, we propose and so far seems to be uh, verified, I mean, by assuming that this is valid for the more general uh, quantum gravity theory, then one can get some non-trivial constraints uh, on the effective field theory structure. Okay, so let me be more specific. So particularly we focus on the uh, possible information that we can get on, on the uh, gauge sector and some 
curvature square terms. So these are the terms that, that uh, I will be interested in. So first of all, we consider the gauge sector, which is weakly coupled in the, in the perturbative regime that we are considering. And uh, uh, so here I show, I show the, the, the possible coupling to the, to the axion and the saxions, which is fixed by corresponding constant CI. Here I'm suppressing possible indices labeling different gauge sectors. And uh, in order for this theory to be weakly coupled, we must require this combination to be large. For any value of the saxonic fields within the saxonic cone, that means that this combination should be positive. On the other hand, uh, um, I mean, we also consider a, a similar coupling now to, to the Riemann tensor instead of uh, the, the, the field strength or the gauge field. So you see that. Uh, uh, this coupling are very similar to these ones. Again, there is an axionic coupling now to the contrary for form, and this axionic coupling to this Riemann square term, which can be actually completed to a full Gauss Bonnet term. And in this case, differently from uh, the gauge coupling here, I mean, a priori from a pure EFT viewpoint, there is no reason to think that this term should have a definite sign. On the other hand, Experience from uh, string theory models, as well as other arguments, suggest that such a combination should be positive. So, as far as I know, there is still no conclusive argument in favor of this positivity, but we'll see that uh, our results uh, will, uh, will have to say something about it. Um, okay, so let's focus on these two terms. And uh, let me write them in this compact form, okay, in terms of this uh, uh, four form here, the corresponding chance sum of three form. And then uh, we can rewrite uh, those axonic coupling by integrating the part in this way. And now, uh, the key point is that uh, if you have an EFT string, uh, even a more general axon string, then uh, uh, this one form appearing here is not closed anymore, but rather it's uh, exterior derivative as a localized contribution, as term localized on the worksheet or the stream. And this implies that if you make a gauge transformation, uh, the, the, the a transformation, uh, I mean, a gauge transformation or the, or the a gauge symmetry, a, sorry, a gauge transformation of uh, this sector and a local Lorentz transformation, then generically this bulk theory will produce some non-trivial, non-vanishing term localized on the stream. So it is just a, a manifestation of uh, the anomaly inflow mechanism of color in a Harvey that also might explain from a dual viewpoint in terms of a two, dual to form potential just uh, uh, one hour ago. And uh, uh, as in that case, now we, since we are requiring that these strings, these EFT strings, are present, should be present in a consistent way, then we must uh, declare that uh, this violation of the bulk gauge symmetries should be perfectly cancelled by corresponding contribution uh, supported by, by these EFT, EFT strings. Okay, and this uh, fixes completely the, the, the form of the uh, anomaly polynomial. Uh, associated with a worksheet sector supported by the string to take this form. In particular, all the coefficients are determined by the charges of the string and these uh, constants appearing in, in uh, the low energy effective theory, in those terms that we are considering. And now the key step now is that uh, even if uh, we cannot uh, assume and exploit the existence of the infrared fixed point describing the worksheet sector, and a corresponding super conformal field theory. We propose that, uh, as already said, uh, this worksheet sector admit a weakly coupled description precisely for these EFT strings. And uh, I mean, um, our proposal comes from uh, a combination of general arguments and uh, also empirical observation from explicit uh, string theory models, which also imply that uh, this worksheet sector should be. Uh, described by a 0,2 nonlinear sigma model with this 
type of spectrum involving possible zero point one two Caral and Fermi multiples with a specific possible set of charges. Okay, now I'm, I don't have much time to explain the origin of all these uh, values. Uh, so let me just uh, go to the, to the uh, result. Namely, by imposing then the cancellation of the inflow contribution and just by using the positivity of the numbers which count the possible multiplets appearing uh, washed multiplets, uh, one can get some non-trivial EFT constraints. So let, in order to, to illustrate them, let, let me just to, to, to state them, let me just rewrite here the saxonic couplings in terms of this constant, the axonic one tabulated by supersymmetry, as I said. And then the first constraint implies that uh, this combination here, where this EI are the charges of any possible EFT string, should be a non-negative multiple of three. Okay, now if you remember that uh, the EFT string charges generate the saxonic con, this automatically implies that uh, this combination here should be positive. And so you see that from the consistency of uh, the quantum consistency of this EFT string, you did get uh, this information, sorry, on the positivity of the uh, saxonic coupling of uh, uh, the saxonic gas bond coupling. The second constraint instead uh, regards the rank of the gauge group. So this uh, RE is the rank of the gauge group uh, or, the or the gauge sector, which can detect the presence of the string. So which couple to the saxons and the axions, uh, which are that reacted by the string. And this uh, rank has an upper bound, which is set by uh, these constants, which specify the gas one term. And so you see that uh, there is uh, this, uh, I mean, unexpected correlation between uh, the new point between the gauss bonnet terms and the gauge sector. Now, actually, one can uh, uh, clearly isolate uh, the different contributions to this uh, upper bound here, which is the, the most conservative one. There is a contribution, I mean, coming from the, 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 the Fermi multiplet, the Walshit Fermi multiplet, just a standard one look topped anomaly of the Fermi multiplets. But there is another possible positive contribution here, which is associated to a possible classical contribution coming from a possible Grinchwort-like term involving instead the Caral multiplet, which actually we initially overlooked and uh, indeed we got initially some uh, too strong, uh, too strong uh, bounds. But if you have any idea, any more precise idea on the UV completion of your theory, maybe you can, uh, I mean, single out which, uh, which, which uh, multiples on the worksheet contribute to the anomaly, and then you can get uh, some stronger bounds as uh, we will see in, a, in a, an explicit uh, example in a moment, okay? So, but before doing that, let me first illustrate uh, the application of these uh, bounds uh, in the simplest possible model. Take just one saxion and just one uh, gauge sector. And uh, so uh, anything is specified by one constant C, one constant C field. And uh, uh, the saxion icon just correspond to the positive real numbers. And they correspond to EFT string charges obtained by discretizing this axonic font, which simply correspond to taking the non negative integers. And then the first constraint implies that uh, this CT appearing here is three times a non negative integer K. And the second constraint implies that the rank for the gauge group, if this constant C is non vanishing, so that the gauge group can see the presence of the string, then its rank is bounded by 6k minus 2, okay? Now, this simple uh, uh, model, admit, uh, I mean, can be embedded in, embedded in, a, in, a, in a class of uh, uh, UV-complete models corresponding to type 2B compactifications on a Calabiao in presence of uh, uh, different brains and of planes. 
and uh, uh, in particular I'm focusing on the, the perturbative sector corresponding to the weak steam coupling sector so in which this basically the standard axiodilaton and then the, the, the our suction is just the, the, the inverse of the, of the string coupling and by performing the dimensional reduction taking account uh, the curvature square the curvature terms correction to the to the I mean appearing in the D brain and uh, of plane uh, contributions to the 10 dimensional effective theory one can extract this formula for the, this constant here appearing in the gas bonnet term which then is fixed by the number of off planes if you if you impose this quantization condition then you see that uh, Actually, this should be a positive integer here. Then you get uh, this condition of the number of the planes. Namely, the number of the planes should be a multiple of 16. And uh, I mean, uh, the first side, we found this constraint a bit too strong and a bit worrying. But then, actually, uh, Federico Carta pointed out uh, 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 the existence of a, of a paper of this mathematician, which actually proved. Uh, this kind of, of result. Uh, furthermore, uh, if we now look at the second uh, bound, now in this case, uh, the relevant EFT string is just a D7 brain wrapping the entire internal cycle. Okay. And uh, the, in this case, uh, we can isolate uh, the, the worship multiplets which really contribute to the anomaly. And these are just Fermi multiplets which then uh, uh, correspond to open strings connecting these uh, the seven brain string and the, 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 the bulk the three brains. And, uh, uh, and then uh, in this case, we, this is one of the cases in which we can really refine our upper bound and get some stronger uh, bound. So, which is given by this combination. And then the corresponding bound of the rank is just this one, which is nothing but the, the, the bound, the different brain uh, child bound, the bound predicted by the tuple condition, okay, which is saturated precisely when there are no background fluxes in, in the internal space. Okay, so this is uh, my, uh, my last class of models that I would like to discuss. So, uh, namely the uh, theoretic uh, compactification of the E8 times E8 uh, theoretic theory on a Calabiao threefold. Here in this picture, uh, I show the m theorization of these compactifications. And, uh, and uh, um, the relevant EFT strings that, um, that we consider, I'm almost done are uh, fundamental strings uh, or uh, NS5 uh, uh, brains wrapping some internal net divisor. So from the, the M theory viewpoint, uh, these fundamental strings correspond to this open M2 brain stretching between the two walls. While these uh, NS5 brains uh, uplift to M5 wrapping internal net divisors on the Calabiao, and uh, uh, sitting at the point uh, uh, of this uh, or our written interval. But uh, I mean, they can be connected, uh, generically connected uh, to the, to the or our written boundaries, and they can, they, can, they can interact with the corresponding uh, gauge sector through possible open M2 brain stretching between them. And also in this case, uh, the, uh, basically the internal topology the Calabiao and the structure of the bundle, two walls, completely determine these uh, constants appearing in the gas bonnet term. Actually, we also included possible mobile NS5 brains wrapping some uh, curve in the internal Calabiao space. Uh, so we get the full complete formula, including also the possible uh, ingredients. And in this case, uh, uh, one finds that from from the, the, the EFT string corresponding to the fundamental string here, one finds this uh, uh, upper bound, which regards the so-called perturbative sector, namely the one perturbative gauge sector, the one associated with the 
the Ligia E8 and E8 uh, uh, gauge group, uh, as well uh, as some possible uh, uh, gauge cycle coming from, uh, from some Kaluza Klein uh, uh, move. And uh, this upper bound uh, coincides with the upper bound found in this paper for theories with 16 supercharges. On the other hand, uh, this addition of this uh, other kind of uh, uh, EFT uh, strings here that correspond to the N5 brains, uh, instead can detect some non perturbative sector, which is maybe uh, can be better interpreted in, a, in, a, in, a, in models which admit a dual theory description, like for instance, uh, this one, and for instance, by applying uh, uh, explicit form of this constant C tilde, one can find this bound on this non perturbative sector, just to give uh, an example. Okay, so let me conclude. So uh, I showed how uh, I tried to convince you that these EFT strings uh, have natural probes uh, for the perturbative, this asymptotic region, asymptotic displayed region of this uh, effective field theories and of the corresponding perturbative physics. Uh, in particular, they provide some non-trivial constraints uh, on the gauge sector and uh, uh, these curvature square terms, showing uh, an obvious, I mean, uh, correlation between these two uh, sectors. Uh, and uh, so in particular showing, I mean, uh, predicting the positivity of the gas bonnet terms and some upper bounds for the gauge groups. So all the bounds uh, and constraints have been uh, uh, are satisfied in the duly complete model that we consider at least so far. So I didn't discuss uh, actually the richer class of models uh, that we, we study, which is the, the, the theory one, which will be discussed by, by Timo in a moment. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Questions? Any questions? Okay, when I ask that. <laughs> okay, so this matter. So the um, you said that some of the bounds that you get in the for the rank of the age group match with the ones that were obtained for sixteen supercharges. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's this is like can you do it? Okay, I mean these are like the strings in. Eight, seven and eight dimensions yeah would... by extrapolation let's say so, so in like their paper, the they, they, their paper the yes they, they at the end of the day for those strings uh, what you get by applying the the cft arguments uh, assuming the existence of the infrared fixed point uh, is precisely for this uh high supersymmetric uh, because the argument that they gave was also precisely based on the distance conjecture right like what happens asymptotically mm -hmm. Uh, and the fact that there is a gravito, like you have something like T duality. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder how to extend this to lower dimensions where maybe we can get other types of limits. So I, it's kind of, I don't know, I, I find quite surprising that it also works. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's in this case, uh, the, the, the point is that uh, we, we are only detecting the perturbative sector. That could be addition in non-perturbative sector to the contribution to the gauge, uh, the gauge sector. So it's yeah. not the, the total upper bound, it's only the upper bound on the perturbative one, which includes these possible Kaluza Klein contributions. Yeah. Okay, now there are two questions. <laughs> so since I have the mic first, <laughs> I last. Uh, can you provide more details about that um, mathematical argument uh, about the divisibility, but, um, the fact that the number of uh, all planes or three planes needs to be a multiple of 16? Ah, well, you want the mathematical argument? No, I mean, but... just the idea. No, they, I think that uh, uh, he considered the taking, I think, the, a proper Calabiao with the SU3 holonomy, the possible involutions. And 
he found that uh, for the I think that for the smooth case uh, that there should be always uh, uh, I mean now number of fixed points, which is a multiple of 16. Now, if you're asking me the details but, but of I mean, the proof, by, I didn't go through. By enumeration? Or by, uh, so uh, he examined many Calabial, so he has a... Good no, he has a general uh, answer. Actually, we know someone. Maybe, yeah, because he actually, he pointed he, out. He's the one pointed out. Yeah, so I, I also don't remember the mathematical proof. Uh, what I did is uh, we have a, a complete classification of... Uh, yeah, sure. Of the complete intersection Calabria house. So I checked in uh, two millions and a half examples. And uh, whenever there are no sevens, the number of uh, oh, three is always a multiple of 16. Then I found the theorem, but I don't remember the proof. So the answer is brute force. Brute no, force. no, 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 no. The, the, that's the historical. It was uh, a brute force. And then I thought, since uh, in two million examples it worked, I thought, is this proven? And it is proven in general. I don't, I don't remember the proof. Yeah, thanks for the talk. So, uh, for what I understand, the fact that these CFT strings exist, you can put constraint in the bulk. Do you know if it is possible to actually put that you need all the strings to explore all infinite distance limits, like in the distance action and string conjecture? Do you know if that's possible to implement not only the existence of some of them, but all of them? Yeah, here things? I was focusing, yes, on, on given a perturbative sector, then I'm assuming the completeness. In particular, the strongest bound comes from the elementary strings. So if we can really assume that uh, the, 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 the elementary strings, the strings with the smallest possible charge, which generate the full lattice, uh, full con of the FT string charges, uh, really are there in the spectrum, then you get these, uh, uh, these constraints, the strongest one. Of course, uh, if Miguel is right, there could be some cases in which uh, they are not present, uh, then you should go to the next one, which uh, populate the possible subcon. Just a very quick comment about the ZMOD 16 thing. There's a Tachikawa and friends have a paper where they look at orientable planes mm -hmm. with charge quantization. There's a cobordism group ZMOD 16. And so if you excise the O3 planes, the boundary is 16 copies of RP5. And so the rest of the manifold is a non derivative is a bordism from that to zero. So ah, it's a group ZMOD 16. Ah, yeah. okay. Very good, thanks. Okay, so let's thank you, Karen.